died tonight at the age of 94, nearly eight months after his wife Barbara died 73 years old. Millions across the nation are remembering the impact Bush had on their lives tonight, including a local politician who says H.W. Bush was the one who inspired him to take public service. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But first tonight, 23 ABC's Alyssa Flores joins us in the Live Center with a look at the reaction on social media and a look back on his life. Alyssa? Yeah, Tim, Jessica, hundreds of people already expressing their condolences uh, to the Bush family here on our 23 ABC Facebook page. The late president passing only months after his beloved wife, Barbara. And tonight we're taking a look back at George W. Bush's life, including the years that he and Barbara spent right here in Bakersfield. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. George Herbert Walker Bush was sworn into a world he called rich with promise. A new breeze is blowing. And a world refreshed by freedom seems reborn. The 41st president and his presidency were shaped by the upheavals of the 20th century. He was born June 12, 1924 in Milton, Massachusetts. His father was a bank manager who was later elected to the U.S. Senate. His mother was the daughter of a New York editor. George Bush grew up in privilege, attending the best private schools. On his 18th birthday, he enlisted to fight in World War II, becoming the youngest pilot in the U.S. Navy. He flew 58 combat missions, but in September of 1944, he was shot down by enemy fire and later plucked from the Pacific by an American submarine. The young pilot was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and sent home. As the war ended, Bush married Barbara Pierce and began his college career, excelling academically and athletically at Yale. In 1948, the young Bush family left New England and moved to South Texas, where Bush became a success in the oil industry. And it was the oil industry that eventually brought him and Barbara to Bakersfield in the summer of 1949 to this house on Monterey Street. GOP consultant and Bakersfield resident Kathy Abernanthy was friendly with the Bush family and even shared a special connection with them. She says it was on a visit to the White House that President George W. Bush remembered his days as a boy being raised at the East Bakersfield home. And as I'm sitting there, I feel somebody massaging my shoulders and I turn around and look and it's President George W. Bush. And he said, hey, I want to tell you, I used to live in Bakersfield. And I said, oh, I know. I own your house. In 1966, he put his oil career on hold when he ran and won a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. I know you and I share a lot of worries about the future of our state and nation. Bush twice failed to win election to the Senate, but was appointed to a series of high-profile positions. Uh, this is indeed a great honor for me, of course. President Nixon chose him to serve as ambassador to the United Nations and then as ambassador to China. I don't view political experience as a detriment, Mr. Chairman. I view it as an asset. In 1974, he became the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. I am a candidate for president of the United States. In 1980, Bush decided to run for president, but was eclipsed by Ronald Reagan, who eventually chose Bush as his running mate. It was a total surprise. I thought that uh, that our, you know, there had been speculation I might be a VP selection, but that all was overshadowed by the, the common wisdom at the moment that President Ford would be selected to be the running mate. Then, after two terms in the Reagan administration, it was Bush's turn, facing opposition in the Republican primaries from Robert Dole and in the general election from Michael Dukakis. It's going to be the Joe Azuzu of, of American politics. Uh, is this the time to unleash our one-liners? <laughs> that answer was about as clear as Boston Harbor. Now, uh, <laughs> let me... Uh... Bush made a promise he would later break. Read my lips. No new taxes. But progress on his watch was felt around the world. The fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of communism in Eastern Europe. Perhaps most notably, the liberation of Kuwait after the Iraqi invasion. A line has been drawn in the sand. Despite his popularity after the Gulf War, President Bush failed to capitalize on the goodwill of the public. A faltering economy and a growing budget deficit eventually weakened his presidency. And in 1992, Bush was defeated by Bill Clinton. With the election of George W. Bush in 2000, the senior Bush joined John Adams in a small elite group, presidents whose sons succeeded them in the White House. The proud father seemed to shun the spotlight, making news largely with a new favorite pass time parachute jumps and i like it i like the feeling of it at 80 you still got feelings and uh, i like that
He devoted his retirement to helping others, raising money with President Clinton for Asian tsunami and Hurricane Katrina victims. He easily could have chosen a life of comfort and privilege. And instead, time and again, when offered a chance to serve, he seized it. In the end, Bush, like his son, insisted he would let history measure his legacy. This picture just taken last month of H.W. Bush. It's from his granddaughter's Instagram, Jenna Bush uh, Hager. He was able to make it to his granddaughter Barbara's wedding just last month. The location of the wedding accommodating to her grandfather, who had, of course, been in poor health. You can see here he watched as she walked down the aisle. Now, we don't have any specific information on his funeral arrangements yet, but we know that he will be buried at his presidential library in Texas. Reporting in studio, Alyssa Flores, 23 ABC. All right, Alyssa, thanks. And tonight our coverage continues as many lawmakers and politicians are chiming in, including some of our local politicians. Tim, who's moved into Studio B, is joined with Assemblyman Vince Fong. Tim? Yeah, Jess, good evening. Thank you for that, uh, Assemblyman Fong. Thank you so much for coming in tonight Thank on you this uh, somber night. So tell yes. me where you were and, and, and when you got this news. I mean, it's something we've sort of expected, his age and the passing of his wife, Barbara. But uh, it's certainly a blow to politics, and it's it's a, a somber night tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something you, 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 you we were... He was he was not doing well health wise, right. but it's something that you, you can't never prepare for. I mean, I just got home and and, and I just got the, um, a quick text from a friend of mine who uh, who actually was has been involved for po in politics for a while. He said, "Did you hear the news?" And mm -hmm. and so you know, then all the articles started coming, and then you saw all the social media posts, and and a lot of the, my friends who've who've worked in his administration were posting a lot of memories about about the president. But uh, he's, I mean, he's a true statesman, um, American hero, served in World War II. Um, I'm not sure we'll see uh, know another or experience another, um, you know, president like uh, President H. W. Bush, um, but um, known for his kindness, his humility, his hu humility, and mm -hmm. that's what we'll remember him. And, and you shared a great uh, quote on Facebook from uh, the former president. You said, "He said, and I do not mistrust the the future. I do not fear what is ahead. For our problems are large, but our heart is larger." And I wonder. During this time in our politics, with everything that's going on, the rhetoric and the divisiveness, we just came off one of the most heated midterm elections. Is that message going to get through to folks? I think at the one thing that uh, that that President Bush um, always maintained was the goodness of America and the goodness of the American people. And I think that uh, over time, um, you know, that's what will always remain. I mean, that's the, the greatness of America, and he believed that, and he believed in the, in the character of our country and that freedom is the most important thing that we can pass on to the next generation. And so I do believe that uh, his legacy will be that. And I think that uh, we'll all come together because of that. And you talk about just the, the character, the man. The, I mean, World War II veteran, a statesman, someone who believed in public service. Uh, it inspired you to get involved in politics. You, you look back at these, these central figures in American history and you glean something off them. What have you taken away from his, his life? Well, someone who's, who's uh, who's studied history, who's gotten involved in public service, not by choice, but but the opportunity to, to give back. I mean, he's always, if you read his, his, his inaugural address, he talks about the fact that it's our duty to, to serve our community, to make our, to our community a better place. Mm -hmm. And that's when we run for office, that's what, we, that's what we aspire to do. That is our goal, is to leave our community and our country and our state better than it was before. And as someone in public life, I'm, I'm sure you, you uh, get the magnitude of this uh, and just what Bush meant. I mean, you talk about the connection here to Kern County. It seems like there's always some uh, echelon of our community that it touches to the highest office in the land and, sure. and to the most important people. And, and that's such a special thing that we'll always have here. You mentioned you've been to that house several yes. times. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a three-month stay uh, um, in town. Uh, yeah. you know, his house is on Monterey Street. Uh, he um, and his son, who, who later became president, um, and then I think his wife was pregnant at the time. And so, I mean... Look, he grew up in the Great Depression, enlisted to serve in World War II right after high school. Um, goes was shot down, um, and then continued to fight, um, and and was 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 a pilot, um, and then of course had a distinguished career after he established his business career, um, and then became a congressman, uh, the ambassador uh, to China, mm -hmm. uh, CIA director. I'm not sure um, you'll see someone with the type of resume uh, that he had. But, uh, you know, we, that's what we all aspire to be uh, in some ways is to, to serve. I mean, he was a true public servant uh, who dedicated his life um, to, to, our, to his country. And, of course, if you look p past his presidency, um, he did so much charity-wise, raising money to, 
uh, when, when, when natural disasters occurred, uh, partnering with, you know, you know, other elected officials, mm -hmm. but, you know, people uh, throughout society and culture, American culture. And, and, and you're getting set to be sworn into a new uh, session of, of the Assembly in the state. Uh, what will be the mood, you think? I mean, that, that's happening quite soon. Uh, Monday. What will be the mood in politics and among the, the Republicans? Uh, this is... This has got to be a reflective time and something that, you know, when McCain passed, that was a time the country came together and really had a discussion about uh, where our politics are, where we want to go. Where do you think the, the state of California and, and the legislature will go further from this? Well, the campaign's over, and, and, and when we get sworn in, it gives us an opportunity to focus on governing. And that's when we get elected, um, um, when the, the communities that we represent um, gives us the opportunity and loans us the power every two years or four years, um, depending on the position. Um, our job is to do what's right for our community and to, um, and to, to have this. We, we, we will have disagreements, mm -hmm. but it's not to be disagreeable. It's to fight for what's best for our community. And so I hope that um, um, as we go forward that uh, we'll put uh, people first mm -hmm. and that we will do and, um, what's best for our community. And remember that quote you shared, for our problems are large, but our heart is larger. Exactly. All right, Assembly Bins Vince Fong joining us tonight live on a night, a somber night, remembering George H.W. Bush tonight, uh, passing away at the age of 94. Jess, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Tim, thanks, and more reaction pouring in tonight. President Donald Trump releasing a statement saying in part that he and Melania are grieving with the nation tonight, praising former President Bush, saying as president, he set the stage for the decades of prosperity that have followed, going on to say his example lives on and will continue to stir future Americans to pursue a greater cause. And former President Barack Obama also reacting tonight, posting on Twitter, saying America has lost a patriot and humble servant. While our hearts are heavy today, they are also filled with gratitude, not merely for the years he spent as our 41st president, but for the more than 70 years he spent in devoted service to the country he loved. And we'll continue to bring you the latest on the passing of George H.W. Bush on our website, turn to 23com We'll have reaction from lawmakers there, celebrities, and more. Plus, more on his life available, as we mentioned on our website, a special section there devoted, as well as our Facebook page. Plus, we're going to have the very latest on the weekend morning news, the only broadcast tomorrow at 6 a.m. We want to turn now to the big one in Alaska. Anchorage rocked by a 7.0 earthquake. Video streaming and showing people running for cover. Buildings damaged. Snow-covered roads buckling during the morning commute. A Bakersfield native now living there sharing with us tonight what she experienced. In Alaska, a state of emergency has been declared after that er earthquake struck around 8.30 this morning. Tremors knocking out power for thousands.